Here's your host, Alex Garrett. Well, you know, when the schedule came out for Major League Baseball this season, there was a lot of promise. In fact, this weekend showed a lot of promise. A Subway Series in New York. Talking baseball. Baseball in New York. And then, of course, the rain came, and now Game 1 is postponed of the Yankees and Mets. And, and this comes at a very interesting time. I see both teams are submitting a line of cards, so that's interesting, considering there could be rain in the forecast. There is rain in the forecast today for Game 2, but they're going to try and get this one in. However, you look at last night, you look at the energy of last night. The Yanks had not played since the debacle against the Angels. You know, being at a game and then leaving it only to see the Yanks lose and fall asleep during the loss uh, was very weird. I mean, I decided to go see Otani pitch, and boy, did he implode in front of the crowd at Yankee Stadium. And then I got to see a, a radio colleague, if you will. I mean, she's on a different station, Danielle McCartan. I call her a friend, too. Very cool to meet her. And then, you know, the rains came. Not once, but twice. And when the second time happened, I did decide to leave because it's 10 o'clock at night. Some people did say, and some people started saying fire boon uh, at one in the morning at Yankee Stadium, which you got to love that passion, right? So, what Thursday was to me was an entire reset. And look, the Angels themselves, people don't want to understand, don't, don't know what I'm talking about here. But the Angels themselves just saw one of their best hitters, Shohei Otani, get imploded on the mound. For, uh, in front of the Yankees Stadium crowd. Seven run first, multiple walks, three or f- the three hits. But all those walks and batting around against a guy that was this touted batter and pitcher. He flew out to the left his first time. His first and only time up in the Bronx, by the way, on uh, Wednesday. First and only time hitting and pitching. The other day, he hit huh, two homers, almost a third. So that was three homers total for the series for this guy in New York. But on the mound, he just got nervous. His nerves got to him. He got shaky. And so I do believe Thursday's rain out was a mutual decision. Because Joe Madden, I don't think, was going to put Otani back in the lineup a day after, especially in the rain, especially uh, whatever rain there was. It just It was a burnout postponement, I like to say. Then last night comes along, and you've again got a a matchup of two teams that are struggling. The Mets have lost their last four or five. They just went to Atlanta and had a terrible series there. And to me, maybe a reset is what is needed. I know, you want to go back out there and play. But give the Yanks and Mets a cool-down day like yesterday. And just maybe, the weekend of July the 4th, Mets Yankees will be electrifying now. Just maybe it will be what it's supposed to be built, what it's billed as. New York, New York, July the 4th, in this beautiful city of New York. On George Steinbrenner's birthday, they'll be playing a doubleheader. And you know, George Steinbrenner always loves to beat, loved to beat the Mets. He would have been 91 tomorrow. And so, I think this rain out, Came in a very ideal time. I think it's incredible. Two rainouts in a row. That's just very rare in sports. But, uh, well, in baseball, I should say. But yes, I think, I think last night being postponed was the best thing that could happen to uh, Rojas's team and Boone's team. Because the Mets have been sliding. Do you, do you notice that? They started the week up five games. And now they're what? Two and a half up. Or one and a half up. Not good. Not good. And yes, the injury bug is starting to show. They did call up Stroman before the series. I think that's going to help this team. 
he was not really hurt. He had bereavement after losing his grandmother. Yankees uh, put Clint Frazier on the injured list and uh, called up their new guy, LaCastro, who I guess got hit a lot in the Arizona. So maybe he'll get some hit by pitches on the Yanks. Uh, maybe some hits. Who knows? But the fact of the matter is, last night was needed. Last night was a huge reset. Because, you know, when the Mets lose a game to grab pitches, that rattles. That's rattling. Because if you think about it, DeGrom should be your every every five starts. That should be a win. But they've been struggling. And they struggled. They, they tied it up. And then the Braves won in the ninth. After some sloppy play. And the Yanks. What more is there to say about that? What more is there to say than top of the ninth up 7-4? to four. I'm sorry, eight to four, and Chapman blows it. What is that? What is that about? Why has he looked so shaky? It's very disturbing if you're a Yankee fan. And I don't know what you thought of uh, Hal Steinbrenner's press conference, but I will say. He is right to put the onus on the players. It is them. It is them hitting into more than one, you know, more than 45 double plays. It is them base running errors left and right. It is them blowing an 8 to 4 lead. Yeah, Aaron Boone can only do so much. But when you're paying a guy like Chapman even, he should be an automatic lock. His, it gets into his head. What do you think about the Spidey attack or not? I think this game gets into his head. He works and grinds through it. Maybe he gets through it or not. But, you know, that wasn't the first time. A week ago, a week earlier, against the Royals, which I was at, he blew the lead against Kansas City. If it weren't for Sanchez and Voigt and, uh, and actually Stanton, Yanks might have lost that game. So, my question is now, if Chapman's not the answer, why not give Zach Britton a chance at his prestigious closing role? You know, he was an all-star because of his closing duties in Baltimore. He may have had his struggles here, but give the guy a shot to close it out. You've got a bullpen of guys that can hold it till the ninth. Now, Yank's got to find their ninth inning guy. It is not a role that's Chapman. It is not. How can you say it is when he blew a game against Kansas City, then a week later not only blew it after a rain delay, after another rain delay, after an 8-4 lead, but then lost it? How can the Yankees say that's their guy still? Because he's not. And you've got a guy who's closed before in the bullpen. And that is Zach Britton. And Britton has had his injury woes. He's had this and the other. He's struggled before. But you know, you need a fresh arm in the ninth inning. Can we admit that? You can't keep going to Chapman if all he's going to do is blow it. Now, I'm not saying don't go back to him. You got him. You don't want to shake his confidence. But... You also don't want to lose these games. Yanks are, right now, as we speak, nine, nine and a half out of the East. Nine and a half out against Boston. In the wild card, it's five games out of the second spot, which Oakland holds right now. Tampa Bay holds the first. Tampa Bay Sports, by the way, Look at what they're doing. The Lightning are going to win. I mean, it's a championship town. There's no other way to say it. Tampa Bay is a championship town. I know the Rays lost the Dodgers. 
but it's a championship town. You win against, you win with Brady against Mahomes. You're up 3 nothing against a Canadian team that wasn't even supposed to be there. Tampa's a, a, a sports town, a, a championship town. Because you're going to have another champion, most likely, crowned in Montreal. If it comes back to Tampa, I'll be shocked. As the Bolts are up 3 nothing. With a chance to close it out on the road in Montreal in front of limited capacity. Uh, well, I'm glad I brought this up because to the dude that wanted to miss your child's birth for game three. Okay, Canadians haven't been here in quite a while. Okay, since 93 actually. Canadians haven't been here in a while. I get it. But you could have gone to game four. It wasn't like elimination game last night. And then he proudly, he proudly states, did you see this side? He proudly says, missing the birth of my first child with the Canadian hab. Hope it's worth the price. Ha ha, Carey Price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That is an L, as the kids like to say. So he might have suffered three L's last night. Missing the birth of his kid. His firstborn. Are you kidding me? Canadians losing. And can you imagine? I mean, maybe the wife was okay with it, but she's got to be pissed. Or girlfriend, whatever. She's got to be pissed. I would be pissed. If I were the guy's brother, I'd be pissed. Or if I was the guy, if I was the girl, the woman's brother, I'd be pissed. It's your firstborn. You could have gone to game four. It's like straight up uh, fever pitch, <laughs> in a sense. Remember that movie where Jimmy Fallon put sports over, put the Red Sox over Drew Barrymore? Great movie. I, I highly recommend it. But come on, dude. And you got to see him lose three. Go down 3 nothing. How do you feel? How do you feel waking up right now if you're this dude? Not good, probably. Not good. So, Tampa Bay is a sport, a championship town. I do think the Rays could get there. Uh, Dodgers just had an incredible run. I'm glad Trevor Bauer is on MLB administrative leave until this whole thing with his disaster gets start, figured out. But can you imagine the PR crisis if he started for the Dodgers tomorrow? Oh, my God. You talk about fireworks. That would have caused fireworks. If all these texts and pics and everything are true, which seemingly it is, we may not see Trevor Bauer for a while. And honestly... Couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Couldn't happen to a nicer guy. He's a head case, guys. And 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 I'm not surprised about this. I'm just not. It's horrific, actually. And then you got these guys saying, well, if it's true, well, it seems like as the momentum builds, it's true by the day. That this guy roundhoused a 27-year-old woman quote-unquote rough sex, but that doesn't lead to punching and bleeding and bleeding in the mouth. I mean, that's just ridiculous. More than ridiculous. It's it's just awful. And I, he might he might face jail time for this. And as I said, couldn't happen to a nicer guy. But that's on that coast. On this coast, Yanks, Mets, maybe the reset they needed was another rain out. I know everybody's like, how can the Yanks close down and lose money like this? But you don't. They'll rebound. The stadium is at full capacity. They're going to have tons of fans this season. Even if they're down like nine and a half, fans want to go to this Yankee Met game. These Yankee Met games. Fans want to... Get back in it. 
Because we were not there last year. We were not there last year. We were in a pandemic. We got to deal with the fake crowd noise. We got to deal with the no fans in the seats. As a Yankee fan, it was troubling to see. Not as a sports fan. Uh, I mean, the efforts of MLB to put it on to begin with was incredible. The efforts of the NHL to put on a playoff series was incredible. The efforts to do the NBA the way they did it, all of that was incredible. But now we're hungry. We want to be back in the seats here in New York City on July 4th weekend as the rain starts now. At least in this borough of Queens. I don't know if it's happening in the Bronx, but I'm, I'm hearing it. On my air conditioner. So, don't, don't get discouraged after two rainouts. They'll get back on the field, who knows when, and they'll play, and the fans will be into it. The fans will rock Yankee Stadium, and then of course they'll rock City Field on September 10th, 11th. And 12th. Especially if one of these teams or both of them are in it still. Met fans, you might be panicking. But you know what? You look at the standings today. You are, to be exact, two and a half up. You've had a four and six in the last ten. You've looked sloppy. You've pitched poorly, in a sense. But you're still up two and a half at 4th of July. That's something that no one saw coming. And I think this is where they're going to either keep the division or lose it. This series, the following series, they'll either keep it or they'll lose it. That's as simple as that. But I think the Met fan base, they're pent up. They're fired up. They want to see a win. They want to see them back on the field. They want to see them rebound. And they can. I think against the Yankees they can. I can't see them sweeping the Yankees. I can't see the Yankees sweeping the Mets. But the highly probability of the Yankees taking two out of three from the Mets is very tough. And in fact, today's game is so important if you think about series because most likely there could be a split tomorrow. Double headers, very tough to sweep. I've learned. So there could be a split tomorrow afternoon and night. And if that's the case, today's game matters so much. Because I know for Yankee, for bragging rights, Yanks want to win. Because right now, division doesn't look right there. But for the Mets, the Mets lose today. And they go 3-7 and seven their last 10 as the Nationals are back up at, four, at 500. Woo! 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 Wait! Hot under the collar. Because the pressure will be on this team as July swelters on in. Have a blessed July the 4th weekend. Enjoy the fireworks. Enjoy everything. And we will talk to you very, very soon on Alex Garrett Podcasting. This has been the Sports Hour edition of Alex Garrett Podcasting. Oh, and by the way, I talked to Danielle about doing sports talk. And I love her passion. I think she should get a day shift at WFAN. But for me, like, I don't know. I, I love talking sports. But the callers of the same subject every day would tire me out. I want diversity. So, to do sports radio for me would have to be diversified. Adaptive sports. A mix of a lot of different things. I would talk main sports news, obviously. But I think the new blood of sports radio, sports talk radio, has to infuse their own selves into it. They can... 
We can talk about the news, sports news of the day, the raid out, the how bad the bets are, the ache struggles. What do people say about Hal Steinbrenner? Yeah, I want to people know New Yorkers' thoughts on that. In fact, Alex at AlexGNYC.com. Alex at AlexGNYC.com. Email me if you, if you have thoughts about Hal and what he said on Thursday. But overall... We've got to inf- we've got to get a new blood in the sports radio. We've got to transform it to do more than just sports, but cover the niche sports topics. Because that'll draw calls too. That'll make it more interesting. I mean, how many calls can you get on the Yankees a day without sounding the same repetitive stuff? How many calls on the Mets woes can you get a day? I think this U.S. Olympian being suspended for marijuana. Is very, very intriguing. I mean, I got into that more, but considering it's legalized here in New York and in other places in the States. But she was going to be this big star uh, in in, uh, Tokyo this year. Shikari Robin Richardson suspended for one month after testing positive. For marijuana. She will miss the Olympic 100. Jenna Perdini is going to get Richardson's spot in the third. Richardson accepted the 30 days. It's been ends in July. Which will be in time to run the women's relays. She was going to face the Shelly Ann Fraser Price. I mean, this is a topic for another day, but pretty big blow to USA, Team USA, running. And uh, this might cause the Olympics to evaluate this. At the end of the day, when you think of the doping that does go on, I mean, the Russian team had to be... Suspended and I think banned because of the doping there. That was more than marijuana. That was performance enhancing drugs. That's worse than this on the outside. I'll have to explore more and I'll talk to you more about it and um, let you know the contingency plans of that. But there's so much sports news alongside the Yankees, Mets, the, the baseball talk. This turning around by that athlete against not facing the American flag. That's that's just another episode for another day. I've, I'll talk to you more about it in the next few days. Cause I've got a lot of thoughts on it. But AlexGNYC1 is my Twitter. AlexGNYC1 is my Twitter. And please do, please do keep up on my WordPress and everything else. Have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.